We are here today to ask the government to take radical action on housing. This is to say that people are terrified. Students are paying hyperinflated prices in order to subsidize their landlord's luxuries and real estate speculation. We were about to move into this place that had 10 students in it in total. I was going to take the living room, which had been converted to a bedroom with a single curtain divider. The landlord actually said, no, we're doing renovations and tried to get us to pay for a property that was seven bedrooms instead of the five we needed and an extra 1500 in rent. I paid $800 a month to live in a tiny uh, living room just so I could find a place to live with my cat. I have friends who have slept on couches or in cars for months because the rent is too damn high. I remember this one house, it was supposed to be like a three bedroom with two in the attic and one in the basement. But when I went to the basement, um, I'm not a tall person and the roof was just over my head. like, And the toilet was just like in the open. Students in this tight rental market deal with health and safety issues in their homes. Black mold, faulty utilities, flooding, illegal evictions. There was sewage spewing from my toilet and my shower and my kitchen sink. So I called my landlord to come and fix it. And he tried to do it himself. And in the meantime, spreading poop and septic on my walls and everywhere all over my house. Um, refused to call a plumber. So I did it behind his back and then tried to get us to pay the plumber bill. Um, afterwards, when he was leaving, he made sure to turn around and tell us to uh, clean up the mess um, and not leave it. So me and my roommate had to clean up uh, the city's septic that was all over our bathroom walls and floor and kitchen. We are dealing with rents that take up almost half of our student loans, meaning that we are going into debt to pay for someone else's mortgage or for shareholder profits. There is a major issue with sexualized violence from predatory landlords who try to coerce students into dangerous rental situations. So I started off looking on Facebook Marketplace and um, I had a few good ones, not great, but uh, Dude wanted me to. Uh, he wanted me to give him nude photos so that I could get free rent. We have less students enrolled at UVic this year, which has created a 16 million dollar deficit, leading to service cuts for students. Students can only live in their cars or in tents for so long before they choose to drop out. Send out a survey to my fellow nursing students at Pomosan and UVic. The survey asked about current housing costs, financial resources, and adverse experiences related to housing. I also asked if they plan on staying and working in Victoria post-graduation and how much that decision was influenced by the affordability and availability of housing in Victoria. Quite honestly, I was shocked, but not surprised by many other responses. While some students had family support while in school, the overwhelming majority were paying an average of $1,200 per month in rent and utilities, with many paying $1,600 or more per month. Over half of the students reported having difficulty finding housing, with a small but not insignificant number of students experiencing homelessness at some point during the nursing program, relying on living in hotels, couch surfing, or living in their vehicle while attending school. 20% of the students had to delay their education or felt they may not be able to finish the program as a result of housing issues. Several students discussed living in unsafe housing, dealing with mold and flooding, while others opted for safer, more costly housing, putting them in precarious financial situations. This is evidenced by over half of the students reporting having difficulty affording food, one third stated they were unable to pay bills or rent at one or more points during the program, and one student even faced eviction. Even though 70% of the survey respondents received student loans, the overwhelming majority of the students relied on employment income while working while in school to make ends meet. These students worked an average of 15 hours per week, with many working more than 24 hours per week on top of their full course load. In the final years of our nursing pro uh, program, students are expected to complete unpaid practicums that require us to work 30 to 48 hours of unpaid labor. These occur in hospitals or community settings for up to 12 weeks at a time. Shifts are between 8 and 12 hours in length that may occur any time of day or night, weekdays, holidays, or weekends. Factor in additional time for written assignments, research, and simulation. This leaves little time for students to work in paid positions in order to meet their financial needs. 
Some have adopted the term practicum poverty. UVic has land to build housing and building more long-term student housing would be an effective way for the province to contribute to increasing the rental vacancy rate that has led to skyrocketing rents over the past few years. Yeah, I think it's really frustrating to not have UVic kind of work in solidarity with us and lobby the government and uh, to make these changes. They seem to think that students' lives begin when they enter campus and end as soon as they leave and they're only really worried about when we pay our tuition and getting their own money and so I think it's difficult to portray to them that above being students we're human beings and we deserve housing and when they don't work to secure that for us it puts our lives in precarious positions and it affects our studies and I think that's really frustrating to not have UVic talk about this and help lobby with the UVSS um,